Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London with another watch discussion video and today we're going to have a look at the subject of my, my opinion of the top 5 Audemars Piguet watches. I'm going to start at number 5 and then work my way down to number 1 and along the way I'll discuss why I think each watch deserves that spot in my top 5 for Audemars Piguet and I'll also mention a couple other watches in there that didn't make it in and why they didn't feature. So at number 5 we've got the 15300 ST and at the number 5 spot I've got a few watches that I want to slot into this spot here but um, so I can please as many people as I can but um, my favourite one of them all is the 15300 ST. Uh, it's very similar to the extra thin in terms of uh, proportions and the overall look of the watch being 39mm uh, but it's a little bit deeper and it's got a little bit more wrist presence than the extra thin. It's also got a second hand as well. Um, there are a few different things I prefer on the 15300 ST versus the 202, the extra thin, uh, but I won't go into that now. Um, if you saw my dream collection video a couple months ago, you'll see that this watch featured in that collection. A couple really nice dial options for this watch. Yeah, so overall I think this is one of the best uh, APs there are. I love this watch so much. I definitely would own this watch. Uh, I just think you can't go wrong with it. It's pure classic AP style. For the people that want something slightly bigger or slightly newer, then you can look at the 15400 ST, which is the 41 mil version. So the 15300 ST is 39 mil, like the true original Royal Oak. Uh, and the 15400, the new current collection version, is 41mm, which is much more in line with today's bigger watch style. There are some really nice dial options, my favourite ones, in fact I love all of them. There's a white, black, a grey and a blue, all of them look amazing. We had a client that bought the grey one the other day, um, and every time I see the grey one, I just fall in love with it. It's such a cool watch, um, that grey on grey. Uh, but all of them are amazing watches. All our clients that own these watches love them. So yeah, they're definitely a brilliant entry level watch as well. 15300 or 15400, obviously the 400 being current collections, more comparable. Now for people that want something slightly more sporty um, and really like a chronograph, then you can either look at the old reference 26300 ST or the current reference 26320 ST um, or the slightly older 26320 STs. Uh, because those ones are basically the same watch as these, but just the chronograph versions. I personally prefer the older 26320 dials. I'm not as big a fan of these new like contrasting dials with the different subdial dial um, uh, colors. I personally prefer the older style. Um, the thing that I probably prefer about the uh, standard Royal Oak versus the Chrono personally, which is why I put the 15300 at the top of this little mini selection at number five spot is I prefer the original look of the Royal Oak. I prefer the much more simple, like time only and, or time and date, um, rather than the chrono can sometimes clutter the dial a little bit. And I prefer the more classic look to a Royal Oak, um, but, which is funny because that's changed completely before. If you asked me a year or two ago, I would have not at all considered a normal Royal Oak. I would have only looked at a chrono because I much prefer the presence on my wrist of a chrono. I like the pushes. Uh, it just has more wrist presence, a chronograph in general. Uh, but now I much prefer much more classic watches and so the Royal Oak, the standard Royal Oak, is a better option for me now. Uh, these watches are amazing, the Royal Oaks, especially in steel. The, the gold versions of these watches are really nice, but personally I much prefer the steel. I think that's really what the Royal Oak is about. That incredible case finishing, all those amazing polished edges and, um, and beveled edges on the bracelet. Uh, you know, all your different polished and brushed links. I think it's just a pure work of art and obviously it's much harder to craft that in steel. Um, I think it's almost worth more having that in steel even though obviously gold um, you know, gram by gram is more expensive. The good thing as well about steel is it will last longer in terms of that finish because it's so much harder than gold. Uh, I find that a lot of Royal Oaks, uh, the gold Royal Oaks don't look so good after a while like the bezel. They kind of have this smoothed out effect. You lose that amazing brushed finished, uh, whereas the steel, you still do have that to an extent, but nowhere near to the level that you see on the gold. A really good thing about these Royal Oaks is you can actually put straps on as well. So the old 15300 ST, you could put uh, leather straps on um, and you can could actually put a City of Sales rubber strap on it. Um, but the newer ones, you can get lots of different uh, rubber strap styles for and they look really cool on the rubber strap. It's a really nice way to sort of change up the look of the watch make it a bit more sporty. Um, obviously the bracelet's a true work of art and I think it's the best bracelet in the whole industry. 
but sometimes it's nice to switch it up and then when you put the bracelet back on again, you really, really appreciate what you've got there. I'd say if you're looking for your first AP, then those four watches, those four references that I mentioned there are so good. And they're one of the best entry level APs if you can afford to buy those ones. Uh, so yeah, definitely check those out. Next is number four, and that is the 26510ST, which is, in my opinion, one of the most undervalued watches in the whole of the Swiss watch industry. And that is the Royal Oak in steel, uh, the tourbillon version. So 41 mil, um, it's extra thin as well. It's an absolutely stunning watch and it is so undervalued. If you look at these for sale, they're going for 60, 70,000 pounds. For a tourbillon Audemars Piguet, that thing, that's amazing. Uh, you can definitely get cheaper Audemars Piguets that are tourbillons, uh, but to have a Royal Oak as well, that the most iconic um, Audemars Piguet. In a tourbillon version, I just think that's so cool to be able to have that for much less than £100,000. Of course, if you buy it direct from Audemars Piguet, you're going to be paying much more, um, but there are plenty out there that are used for much less than the full retail price. I personally really like, so like skeleton dials with tourbillons. I think the tourbillon is such an amazing thing to be able to see and work away. You know, it's so magical looking at this watch as it ticks away. Um, but I quite like when the tourbillon is held like amongst the skeleton movement and you can see all the rest of the movement in, you know, in context, where right? you've just got the tourbillon alone, like this one where it's kind of stamped out the middle of the dial. I don't think it's as balanced as a, as if it was actually within the movement, but I really, really still love this watch. I think it's one of the best watches AP's ever made. Uh, but, I, and obviously, like I said, it's one of the most undervalued watches in the world. I think if you own this watch, it's probably the ultimate watch you would own at that point. Uh, it's probably gonna be the best watch in your collection. When you see a, a can't stress enough, go to Instagram now and type in the reference 26510ST in the hashtag bit or just 26510 and watch some videos of this on people's wrists. It is amazing just watching that tourbillon tick away. Tourbillons are so magical anyway. And if you watch my uh, Q&A from a few months ago, you'll see that the first watch that made me fall in love with watches uh, or the watch that made me fall in love with watches was this watch in gold. Um, and the tourbillon I just stared at for ages because it is so amazing. I love that this watch overall looks very simple and very much like the standard either 202 or the 15400 um, at first glance. But obviously you've got that incredible uh, detail and, and amazing magical movement from the tourbillon. It kind of adds a new depth to a very simple, well, an otherwise very simple watch. I like the finer details in this watch, obviously like your platinum bridges, you know, your overall uh, intricacy within the tourbillon. I think it's just such a beautiful watch. And then turn the watch over and you've got another little detail you've got on the back where you can see the tourbillon from the other side. And you've also got a power reserve back there as well because um, this one is manually wound. So it's important when you're winding that you know you're not gonna overwind the watch. And obviously I love the blue dial. Uh, there are a few different dial options on this watch. Uh, there's also gold versions, obviously. Um, there's newer dial versions, there's gemstone versions. There's tons of different variations of this Tourbillon Royal Oak. But this blue dial is my favorite version. I loved the old black dial, but the blue for me is, you know, obviously iconic because it's what the original Royal Oak had, a blue dial. This for me would be the ultimate watch in the whole entire world if it was just a little bit smaller. For me, the 41 mil is slightly on the big side. Um, I prefer like a 39 mil. So if this was in 39 mil, this without doubt for me would be the best watch in the world because it's just the coolest piece. Uh, but doesn't matter uh, necessarily for me because there's plenty of people out there um, who love the 41 mil size and it fits them perfectly. I can't stress how undervalued I think that watch is. But anyway, next on to number three, we have the 26170ST, and that one is the old uh, reference, the Navy version specifically, old reference Royal Oak Offshore. Um, I might be a little bit biased putting this down to number three, because I did own one of these watches, but I absolutely loved this watch when I had it. It was such a cool watch. Um, I think it's one of the best watches AP's ever made as well. As I'm probably saying about all these watches here, but um, you know, I love AP anyway. But yeah, I think it's one of the greatest watches they have ever made. Uh, the proportionally, it's such a cool watch. It looks amazing on the wrist. It's got an amazing wrist presence. 
Um, you can spot them from a mile off. They're just some really, really cool watches. They're obviously quite big because um, they've got the iron casing with inside um, like the original version. Um, so yeah, they, they are designed to be more sporty than the more classic Royal Oak. Uh, but I love this watch and it's one of the best everyday watches. I wore mine absolutely every day doing everything. I just totally fell in love with that watch. Never came off my wrist. It uh, doesn't matter if I was wearing a suit or if I was just wearing shorts or swimming shorts, whatever, I always had it on. I know that when it was originally designed, it was aimed at a younger audience, but so many people wear them now. It doesn't really matter what your age, there's tons of people wearing them. The reason why I chose uh, that specific variation, Steel Navy, is I love that dial, that white dial, it's such a pretty dial. It goes with everything, um, you know, obviously you've got your blue accents on the watch, so you are sometimes a little bit limited, but navy in general is really good complementary color with most colors, um, but the white dial just is so versatile. A uh, great thing about this watch is you can change out the straps, um, either have the standard horn back, like most people have it on, or you can have the navy uh, rubber. Uh, there's all sorts of different rubber options that Audemars Piguet offer, like white rubber, uh, red rubber. You know, there's tons of different versions that you can get from AP. Uh, and that's why I think this white dial was really one of the best ones to have because it is just so versatile. There's a few different reasons why I prefer the older style to the new one, but there are features from the new one that I do prefer over the older one as well. Um, that's the newer reference 26470 uh, reference versus the older 26170. So the reason, the things that I prefer on the old one is the older watches had, the older offshores had deployant clasps, so proper deployant clasps, a uh, bit more high-end feel, a bit more luxurious versus the newer style, which is like a D-buckle, which feels just a little bit more like utility and sporty. I kind of preferred that luxurious feel when you put on the watch. Definitely felt more um, of an experience rather than just putting on the same sort of buckle that you get from like a Casio G-Shock or whatever. But something I do prefer about the uh, newer versions is that they feature firstly ceramic pushers which are much harder uh, wearing over time. But secondly they have a clear crystal case back which means you can see the movement inside which I really missed about uh, the other, the older version that I had. I really miss not being able to see inside the movement. I think it's a real shame. So I love it that they now put clear crystal case backs on the new version so you can see inside because uh, they are truly a work of art inside. And I think it's a shame when watch companies put that much work and time in, you know, to an incredible movement, incredibly finished movement as well, and don't show it off. I know I mentioned I prefer the older clasp to the newer D buckle. Um, but there is a slight advantage with the new version. It is much more comfortable. I did find that the old deployment clasp dug into the side of my wrist quite a lot. And we have a few clients with that watch who all experience the exact same um, problem with it. It does definitely get a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. It's actually just where the hinge part of the um, AP logo uh, deployment part of the uh, clasp is, where it opens up, the hinge, end of the hinge, uh, digs into the bone of your wrist. So it does get really uncomfortable over time, whereas you will not have that problem at all with this new D buckle. It just doesn't have the same sort of luxury feel that the other one does. And again, this watch is amazing value for money. Uh, you can pick these up for around 13,000 pounds used, and they are so much watch for the money. Such a cool looking piece. Um, if I had the choice between a steel Daytona and that, I would go for the Royal Oak any day because it's just such a cool looking watch. The Steel Daytona is as cool as it is and as much as I love that watch. And at the end of the day, I probably wouldn't maybe want to wear the, Royal, uh, the Daytona more because it suits my wrist size better. Uh, the Royal Oak is just by far a much, much better watch than the Daytona. In terms of case finishing and overall design, it is a real work of art. Next at number two, I have a slightly unusual watch uh, for people to mention in the top five, and that is not necessarily a ladies watch, but it's a 37 mil Royal Oak, which is mostly bought by women, uh, but it's still you know, considered a unisex watch in the collection. And the specific one that we're looking at is the 15454 uh, BC, which is the uh, new frosted white gold 37 mil Royal Oak. It's an absolutely spectacular watch. If you get the honor to see this in real life, is a true work of art, it's stunning. It's such an amazing piece. I haven't seen the frosted effect on a watch before. Um, maybe I just haven't looked hard enough, but uh, this is such a cool look. I love the fact that it looks like diamonds in a way, but it's not diamonds. Um, I much prefer this over a diamond set watch, even though I think diamond set 
uh, watches are pretty amazing because obviously I'm involved with jewelry more so than watches. Um, you know, I really appreciate diamond setting and doing that many smalls or setting that many smalls is a really amazing thing. But for me, I just love the unique look of the frosted effect. Um, I think it's a cool way to make light shimmer off a piece, off the metal even, uh, versus setting it with diamond. I quite like the like organic effect that this has versus setting stones, uh, you know, setting it with smalls. Um, if you set a watch with smalls, it looks incredible. It's got this amazing life and spectrum of colours that you won't get from this frosted, uh, from the diamonds that is. But I quite like the kind of organic feel that the frosted effect has. In a way, it's similar to like a hammer effect on a ring. Uh, you kind of get this more natural feel from the frosted that you do than you do from diamonds. Kind of diamonds, uh, in a way, is very perfect. The you know the parve um, alignment of all the different stones has to be in a certain alignment, and they all look the same. You know, in terms of on each link, whereas this frosted is, you know, every link is going to look totally different and have a different arrangement of dots. And I think that's the magic of the frosted effect is really kind of got a hand finished feel to it. The reason why I put this down at number two is for me, um, not only did I, obviously I mentioned it's true work of art. And if you get the honor to see this watch in real life, it's incredible. The life of this watch is stunning. But the reason why it's up at number two for me is it's kind of in a way totally automapigé what they've done here. They've taken uh, a technique that not many people use. Um, it's kind of very unusual and, and unique finish to a watch and they've totally mastered it and totally made it look incredible um, and made a watch a real piece of art. And that's what automapigé I think does best is they don't just do the normal you know, standard case, you know, platinum cases and, you know, very classic like Patek Philippe does. They're very classic designs, Patek Philippe. You can kind of tell really what each watch is going to look like before they've released it. Uh, whereas Audemars Piguet, they're always changing things up. They're always, as they say themselves, breaking the boundaries and challenging themselves and breaking the rules of watchmaking. And I think that's what I love about them is they are so, in many ways, different to a lot of the other brands in the industry. I love they're always trying to master new techniques and new things uh, and bringing new things to their clients and you know the whole watch industry and showing people what is actually really possible with watchmaking. They have a real, even though they're a very old watchmaking house, they have a very young feel about them. You know, they feel like a really cool, funky brand. You know, with all their watches they do, they, they have a unique, uh, contemporary edge to their pieces, but in a nice way. And if we're going to call this watch a ladies' watch, which I think, you know, there's not many men that are going to wear this frosted effect. Most of the clients that buy this specific 37 mm uh, version will be women. And for that reason, I think this is one of the best ladies' watches in the world. I think it's truly stunning. I think it's much better value than a full diamond set version. Personally, as I mentioned, I much prefer this frosted effect over diamonds. Uh, even though you won't get that kind of spectrum of light that diamonds shine off um, and that liveliness, this provides a different type of liveliness and, and life and sparkle. Uh, it's very, the best way to describe this is like Christmas or like a Christmas tree. The way the light kind of shimmers off it is just really magical. Again, another reason why this deserves this top or the number two spot for me is Audemars Piguet. For me, it's all about uh, case finishing and incredible bracelets and just breaking the boundaries and in finishing of watches and mastering um, you know shaping metals and making metals work for them and I think this is, takes it to another level again the fact that they're still able to create those amazing edges and beveled edges and polished finishes and brushed finishes on the watch whilst doing something as complicated as doing a frosted effect, you know, but maintaining all those amazing lines on the watch is a real work of art and, you know, a big feat in terms of watchmaking. So yeah, I think this is a really special piece. Uh, the reason why I went for the 37 mil over the 41 mil version of this watch, the new version we got uh, that was released this year is because it's such an intricate finish and detailed finish to a watch case and bracelet. I think it deserves to be on a smaller, more delicate watch case and uh, bracelet. Otherwise, I feel in a way that that delicate finish is kind of lost in a big mass of watch like a 41 mil. Okay, and now for number one, I think number one is probably pretty obvious. I think you probably could have guessed it before I even started the video. And I think it's probably going to be most people's number one, but there's a good reason why it's the number one. And I'm sure a lot of people or other watch reviewers out there on the internet will you know, agree with me on this. 
um, and that is the 15202 ST, aka the extra thin. And the reason why I put it at the top spot, for me, it is the ultimate Audemars Piguet. It was the watch that really boomed sales for Audemars Piguet. It was the watch that really put Audemars Piguet on the map majorly um, in terms of the watch industry. Uh, the Royal Oak is an icon in the watch industry now from 1972. Obviously this 202 version, the new version, uh, isn't the original reference um, that we saw back in 1972, but it's very, very close to that. And that's what I think is so great about this watch is they've kept that what, or this watch in the collection over the years, all the way from 1972 uh, till now and till present. I think it's amazing they haven't changed the movement, they've kept the same movement in the watch. The proportions and the finishing on the watch has stayed almost identical since the beginning. The dials have changed very little as well. And I think it's a really nice feature. They've really kept that watch true to the original piece and you know paid homage to the watch that really transformed the brand and, and made them really popular. So as obvious as it is me putting the extra thin at the top spot, uh, I think it's kind of deserves it because that's the watch in a way that really got AP to where they are now. Um, and I don't think it's fair not to give it that spot. I'm sure Onoma Piguet would put that watch there themselves as well, because it's, you know, they owe a lot to that design that Gerard made back in 1972. I love the blue dial on this watch. There obviously is a gold version with the blue dial and the hourglass version with the green dial, which are both really, really cool watches, but I think the steel is obviously the one to have because that's the original. And that was what made the watch so famous at the time was to create those incredible lines and uh, polished edges and you know all the incredible details, case finishing on the case and also finishing on the bracelet that was really difficult to create at the time and no one had really done it on a steel watch. Um, and that's why I think steel, you know, this watch has to be in steel for me at number one spot. Uh, but the other gold versions are really cool too. If I was to create the ultimate version of this 15202 ST, it would actually feature the amazing blue dial from the uh, platinum and steel version, the IP version. And the reason is because it has this kind of black outer edge. It's very much like Patek Philippe uh, dials where they kind of fade inwards towards the colors. I love that effect, that kind of faded dial effect. It looks so cool on that watch. Um, even though the blue dial on the 202 ST, the standard version, is much more truer to the original uh, Royal Oak, the original steel Royal Oak blue dial, um, I just think that blue dial from the platinum and steel version is really magical. And of course, this one is the best investment order my PGA. Uh, in the collection, there is like a three year waiting list on this watch now from order my PGA. Uh, and they sell for not loads of a retail price, but quite a bit. Um, they sell for around 26,000, 27,000 um, pounds. And the retail price just went up to 20,800 pounds. So there's a little bit over, kind of like 25% increase over retail price, which is obviously not insane compared to Patek Philippe, like 5711, uh, which is a comparable watch, um, and maybe a steel Daytona. But in the scheme of one of my PGA watches, this one by far is the best investment in Audemars PA. Now I would end the video here at number one, but I'm actually gonna do a number zero uh, because I have a watch that I totally love from Audemars PA, which I mentioned in my dream uh, watch collection video. And the reason why I didn't put this in the top five is because it's quite a specific watch. And I don't think it'd be fair to put such a crazy watch into the, or not crazy, but you know, very high end watch within the collection. I think it's fairer to put this watch kind of as a separate like bonus watch that really is my ultimate. So this number zero watch for me is the best Audemars Piguet watch there is ever and that's Audemars Piguet has ever made. I love it so much. It's pure perfection for me. And that is the 25829 PT, which is the Platinum Perpetual Calendar Skeleton. And that is an insanely cool watch. It's truly beautiful. If you look at my dream collection video, I discuss it much more in detail than I will now. Um, but I just think it's stunning to look at. It is such a cool piece. I love the hands. I love the design. I love the subdials. Obviously, I love the whole skeletonized dial. I just think it's a true work of art. The proportions of this watch obviously are pure perfection for me at 39 mil. That fits my wrist perfectly. I you can't go wrong with this watch. The, it comes in a steel version and a platinum version and a yellow gold and a uh, rose gold. And for me, the best one is the platinum. It's just the ultimate version. Obviously the steel is amazing as well because it looks very similar. 
um, and it's better for everyday wear in some ways, the steel. Uh, but the platinum, I just think if you own the platinum, just feeling that presence on your wrist would just feel absolutely insane. I haven't seen one of these in real life yet, uh, the platinum version, I've tried one, uh, but I can't wait for the day that I do because I think, I'm, well, I know I'm already going to fall in love with it. This watch is quite difficult to get hold of. It kind of goes for just under a hundred thousand pounds so it is a very expensive watch you can get them for around 70 to eighty thousand pounds if it doesn't have box and papers and sometimes they sell for around that if the owner is a little bit more desperate to sell uh, but you know obviously it is much higher price than a couple of the other watches that i mentioned just now uh, the tourbillon being the closest competitor to this one uh, but i still think probably the tourbillon is much better value than this piece uh, the perpetual calendar is my favorite complication. I love the perpetual calendar and I love the fact that it's skeletonized on this watch. I just think it's one of the coolest pieces AP has ever made. In fact, it, in my opinion, it is the coolest one. This is definitely my dream Audemars Piguet and that holds, for me personally, the top number one spot above all of the other watches I mentioned. But you guys can see it as like a bonus watch. <laughs> okay, so there's lots of watches I didn't mention in this lineup. Uh, it's not necessarily that I don't think they deserve it because Audemars Piguet, as you may know now if you watch a lot of the reviews, is by far my favourite brand. I love them so much. I find it so hard going through the collection to, well, I found this very difficult to choose uh, top five um, because I think there's so many watches out there from AP that would happily sit in this top five selection um, and well deserve that spot. And I'm sure there's plenty of people, you know, that you guys are going to comment in the comments saying, hey, you should have included this one. Um, and the great thing about AP is there are so many watches in the catalog um, and even in the legacy catalog as well, the older versions. And that's the difference between them and someone like Patek and maybe, well, definitely Rolex because Rolex kind of has their core watches and then slight variations of each watch. Uh, whereas AP have obviously the core watches being the Jules Audemars and uh, the Offshore and the Royal Oak, etc., etc. But um, within each version there are so many variations of that watch that you can definitely find a watch that you'll totally fall in love with from them um, because there's just so many variations and I'm not just talking slightly different dial colors I'm talking totally different designs of that watch um, and I just think that's such a great thing about AP so that's what made it hard for me to, to choose a top five because there's so many different variations available from AP uh, but those top five are kind of very similar steel core watches that I find that most people will really like. Uh, but definitely go and check out their catalog, current and also legacy. I'm sure you'll find tons of watches on there that you'll like. Let me know what you think in the comments of this top five. Which would you pick out of the top five? Do you agree with the top five? Uh, what watch would you add in to the list? Um, what other brands do you think I should look at doing top fives for? There are definitely some more that I'm gonna do, uh, but this is probably gonna be my favorite top five of all of them with maybe Patek following closely behind.